we were talking about um, how the festival became the North Carolina Fourth of July Festival. Okay. Um, that was, we had been in business, um, the festival was five years old when um, Doug Legit came to town and he's the one that jumped right into the JCs and, and wanted to participate and uh, he was a new attorney, worked for a local attorney's office and uh, joined the JCs right away because he was newly divorced and he had time on his hands and he wanted to, he had joined the fire department, volunteer fire department over on Yopon where he lived. And so he joined the JCs and when he learned about the Queen's program he was very interested in that and carrying the float places and all the events that we had that involved the Queen. So that's how I got to know him. And, and uh, he, he said to me, he called me one day, I guess in conversation I'd said something about it, but he called me one day and he said, I understand that you would like for the festival to be named the North Carolina Fourth of July Festival. And I said, I really would because every little town in North Carolina can have a 4th of July festival. And, you know, it's open to the whole country. Everybody can have a 4th of July festival, and hopefully they will, to celebrate our, our country's independence. And, but we put so much time and money into our festival, our queen, and we are we think big we've got a lot of good stuff going on down here and the perfect place to have it so i would like to be able to call everybody's attention to this festival by it being the north carolina fourth of july festival and uh, he said i know just how you can do that i said really nobody's told me that before and he said yes all i have to do is incorporate it he said, I don't know why nobody's ever told you that, but all I have to do is incorporate it and get it incorporated as a nonprofit organization in the state of North Carolina. You can name it anything you want. And if nobody else has that name, it's yours. So uh, I said, oh my God, I'd kill for that. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you don't have to do that. But he said, um, I'll fill out the incorporation papers and come by and talk to you about it and we'll get the ball rolling on that. So he called me and he said, now what exactly do you want the festival to be called? And I said, the North Carolina 4th of July Festival at Southport. And so then he said, and the Queen's name, what do you want the Queen's official name to be? And I said, the North Carolina 4th of July Festival Queen. I don't want her to be called Miss 4th of July. I want her to be called the North Carolina 4th of July Queen. So those are in the documents. Those names are documented and they're in the state. Uh, register of deeds or whatever it's called. So he went ahead and did the paperwork for me and uh, nobody knew I was doing that except me. And I was surprised. Anyway, I'll never forget the night that uh, I went to the meeting with the Articles of Incorporation and the, the certificate and all that stuff. He, he brought me uh, I was going to a festival meeting and he brought the information to me with the, uh, the paper, whatever you call it, the Articles of Incorporation anyway, and all the names and everything. And the, it was documented and it was even later read, I know one of our representatives I guess had it read and documented in the House of Representatives in Raleigh. So we are also in our state, um, and I don't know if they call that congressional record, I guess, or whatever it is on the state. 
we are recorded in that, which is, is really great for us. Nobody, and nobody knew I was working on that. I, at first I didn't know that it could be done, but I learned a lot. <laughs> so, but I did want to, um, what was I going back to, baby? <laughs> Oh, I know. I wanted. Oh, well, I do know. What we were talking about? What? Just how we became, you know, the North Carolina okay. Festival and oh, all that kind. Oh, the early festival. I want to go way back to the early days of the Fourth of July festival because that's what made us unique. Uh, we were very fortunate to have in our um, House of Representatives in the Congress. A man from southeastern North Carolina, his name was Alton Lennon, and his administrative assistant was married to a Southport girl, and his name was Doug Jones, and hers was Eleanor. And um, so we had a direct contact, not only through um, our, our military that located here in Sunny Point, but we had a direct foot in the door with our, um, our congressman. And we could get military displays. We had so many static displays along the riverfront. We had, um, they brought a destroyer in here one year for us to give tours on. And we could get like uh, parachute drops. We, the first, I'd say the first five years until regime change, and you know how all that goes, we're going through a lot of it right now, uh, uh, we uh, had absolutely wonderful, we'd have tanks down on the garrison, any kind of military static displays that we could have. We had drum and bugle corps in our parade military and so our festival we had a lot of help and we had a lot of good contacts back then and um, I don't want to downplay any of that because of course what I know the most about is the Queen and all although I was on the festival committee and a big part of everything else that took place um, but I was looking back in my books and um, realizing how much Alton Lennon did for us through our Congress. And you know, back in those days, you could get a little pork barrel money to support different things too, which is not available much to you anymore, and especially in the state legislature. So um, Alton Lennon meant, did a lot, and a lot of the people here, you know, had con closer contact with him, but nobody was closer to him than my fourth queen, our fifth queen, where Diane Reese was my fifth queen. Third queen? No, no that was Cheryl. Fifth, fifth queen. She was my fourth queen. Sandra Allen was my fourth queen. queen. So anyway, somewhere in that book I'll tell you. Um, but um, I was fortunate that it was my fourth queen she was after Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, to have a girl win the pageant that was uh, Doug Jones's niece. And that year, we had a very special event for the Queen. Um, the JCs paid the airfare and flew us, uh, Diane and myself, to Washington. And we met with, of course, her aunt and uncle Doug and, and uh, Eleanor Jones. And uh, they, of course, um, accommodated us at their house, in their home. But then he would, he took us to the Congress. He took us to the Capitol. He, t he took us on the Underground Railway. He, we ate lunch in the congressional dining room with Alton Lennon. I mean, what a treat for a high school girl, mm -hmm. a girl that had just graduated high school. Diane was so oblivious to all of it, she didn't really care, but I was going, oh my God, oh my God. You know, and we went in the House of Representatives and the, the, the guy that carries the mace that opens 
the order was introduced to us. We had pictures with him, and he told us all about the mace that the and it was just fascinating. So we had some wonderful experiences, and all because we had uh, a close connection with our um, our man in the House, of, our representative in the Congress, and uh, we so we had, and of course with Sunny Point being here. Um, there was a lot of pull through the general too with the military that you know, that was overseeing the fort. So we were blessed in those early years, and because we did have those things, is a lot of why people came here and they wanted to keep coming back. And uh, so those were the points that I didn't want to get to talking and leave out. So now we are at our fifth queen who was after Cheryl Johnson, who was the first. Cheryl Johnson was the first to wear the crown, and then Diane came after her, so she was five. And then the sixth queen um, was Stephanie, uh, I don't want to say Falk, <laughs> Stephanie Helms, uh, and she uh, was the first North Carolina 4th of July queen. So. And who was she? Who is she? She's my daughter. <laughs> and her best friend, so. But anyway, and I believe it's all in that book. Now the next book will start with Stephanie's year. So, and uh, so I did, <clears throat> excuse me, um, every year was special. Every year the girl got to do something that the last girl didn't get to do. So in the sixth year, <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Uh, Stephanie Helms was the first Fourth of Ju North Carolina Fourth of July Queen, and we were invited to the opening of Carowinds in Charlotte, and that that was a real big deal for North and South Carolina, as you know, to have that uh, theme park right there on the state line. So it was just great that we. Uh, got to go to Carowinds for the ribbon cutting, and we were drawn in a horse, and you know they had carriages. They brought you in by horse and carriage. It, it was every year the girls have got to do something special, but um, it was just great. Our Christmas parade, I do want to say, because that was the hardest part. We started with the parade in Fayetteville, North Carolina on Wednesday night. And then we would leave Fayetteville the next morning and the guys would bring the float, the JCs would bring that float and ride us through that parade and then they'd go on to the next place and after we got that float. But every year the float got better. Now the first float was not so pretty, but every year the float got better. And that was Cheryl's float, it was kind of tacky, but it, I got a picture of it somewhere in the in this a festival parade and it was pretty, but anyway, uh, we, we, uh, we, the, the JCs would drag that float all over the state, so the 4th of July Queen always had a float for the